hello and welcome today in this video i am going to take you on a journey a journey on a train along with a rather different kind of an official who is someone who is the authoritative figure on that particular train i am referring to this particular poem by t s eliot skimble shanks the railway cat okay uh, poem by t s eliot explained by t s eliot okay but zameen aasman ka farak hai t s eliot one of the most prominent poets of his time right uh, lekin i'll try to make it enjoyable for you try to make you understand well so that you can attempt any question from this particular poem in your examination now ts eliot was the nobel prize winner for poetry for literature in 1948 so as i said one of the most prominent poets the world has seen the interesting thing is that he loved cats and that's perhaps what reflected in this particular poem out here on the railway cat that's what makes the cat the central character in this particular poem and i would want you to read the detailed note about the eliot in that box before the uh, poem let me just take it out take out the book i hope all of you have this particular book treasure chest let's just go through some of the points which i thought were important now um, eliot the last two paragraphs eliot wrote the cat poems in the 1930s and included them under his assumed name old possum in letters to his god children eliot loved cats and owned many during his life he was fond of giving them peculiar names such as jelly rollum petty paws whiskers and george push dragon so very uh, weird kind sounding names right shimble shanks also was staged on theater is a character in andrew lloyd webber one of the very prominent playwrights 1981 musical cats which is based on ts eliot's book and the character is portrayed as a bright and energetic orange tabby cat who lives and works on the night mails okay so please do go through this particular note which is there before the poem starts in your textbook okay let's get started now uh before we get on to it let me show you what ts eliot looks like this is ts eliot okay this is ts eliot and this is uh, the cover of one of the poetry books where you see the cat as the official on top of on the night mail skimble shanks the railway cat okay now what kind of a poem essentially this one is now if you read it at first which some of you would have it would sound very silly a little absurd a little like kya hai it's a very strange kind of poem not i mean do students in icsc class 9 have to read this kind of a very silly kind of a nursery sounding like poem but and this actually i used to teach a student in class 8 a couple of years ago and this was there in her textbook in class 8 also so i have kind of been introduced this poem a couple of years ago now uh, eliot was considered a very serious kind of poet and he has written some marvelous poems okay uh, so it was a little surprising for eliot to be associated with this kind of a poem which sounds a little uh, childish if i may say so okay this poem is about skimble who is a cat and that's the most important person on the night mail okay and the cat is seen in multiple roles as a supervisor as a station master's friend as a patrolling police officer and he roams everywhere and keeps an eye on everyone and he bids goodbye to passengers so in that sense he is the what do you say in hindi kartar dharta the most important person the vip on that night mail but is the poem only about uh if a train and this important person on the uh, particular night mail the answer is no and that's where the ts eliot touch really comes in because this poem can also be interpreted as a very deep and intellectual uh, commentary on the times that ts eliot lived in as i said this poem was written in the 1930s and what happened in the 1930s is when the rise of dictatorships began in europe especially in countries like germany and italy adolf hitler in germany and benito mussolini in italy okay germany and italy 
So this poem is also some kind of a commentary on the political situation prevailing in parts of Europe in the 1930s. And that's how this poem needs to be interpreted. One is a very literal level where it sounds like a very you know child friendly and just fun kind of a poem. But there is an underlying theme of uh, serious commentary being made by the poet in this particular poem, Skimble Shanks, the Railway Cat. So the cat in that sense is the symbol of uh, a clever dictator, a clever dictator who kind of keeps an eye on everyone, on every development that happens on that particular train. And the train is like the country. The train is like the country whose people do not realize, whose people do not realize that they are under surveillance. Ki un par nazar rakhi ja rahi hai, that they are being watched 24 by 7. That is what this poem essentially talks about. And that's the analysis that we will be doing in this particular video. Now, uh, the poet has observed the moment. I'm just telling you the basic point so that when you read the poem, it becomes easier for you to understand the entire uh, poem better. The poet has observed the moment of the cat in a railway carriage, right? Uh, and it's almost personified almost as a normal human being like you and me, right? So this is the poetic device of personification, which has been used by T.S. Eliot, right? The journey begins with the poet talking about the night mail, the railway station where the night mail is supposed to depart from. And there is a lot of confusion. There is restlessness because this particular cat is not to be found. Right. And at the end, it kind of makes an appearance. Right. And that's when uh, it starts. So let's now get started with the poem. OK, I hope the font is clear. You are able to see it. And in case you will have the book. And you should be able to uh, mark it out there. So Skimble Shanks, the Railway Cat by T.S. Eliot. <clears throat> there is a whisper down the line at 11.39 when the night mail is ready to depart. What do the first two lines tell you? The time, 11.39, so it's pretty close to midnight. When the train, the train's name is the night mail. Please note it down because the train is also referred by many other different names. So here you are first told that it is the night mail is ready to depart and there is a whisper down the line. So you're curious to know what is the whisper. Whisper means everybody is talking in hushed tones in whispers down the lines means through the entire railway platform of the railway station. Right. So that's what the line, the platform, it can be referring to either of the time. So there is an atmosphere where everyone is talking in hushed tones. What are they talking about in hushed tones at 11.39 p.m.? Skimble, where is Skimble? Has he gone to hunt the thimble, right? So there is a sense of rhyming. That's why I said it's almost like a nursery rhyme also. Thimble is a small metal or plastic object which is worn to protect the finger. So here it probably doesn't make any sense. But the idea is essentially to rhyme with Skimble, thimble. So that's what T.S. Eliot has done. So when you are young, in order to protect your finger, that's what you do to wear a thimble. Now, after that, it says we must find him or the train can't start, which means and this particular line, this particular line reinforces, emphasizes, underlines the, the importance of skimble, right? Importance of the cat that unless he comes, the train cannot start. So please remember, this is the first indication of Skimble's importance that unless he is on board the train, the night mail cannot depart from the railway station. I hope it's understood. All the guards and all the porters and the station master's daughter, daughters, they are searching high and low. High and low means all over the place. High and low at all kinds of places they are searching for Skimble cat, right? So that's what it means. And then it says, saying Skimble, where is Skimble? For unless he is very nimble, yet another case of uh, uh, rhyming. Thimble, nimble. So that's what they are doing. Nimble uh, essentially means someone who is very quick and light in movement, very agile, very quick. Okay. So unless he is very fast, very quick, right? Then the night mail just can't go. Yet another indication that of the importance of uh, Skimble Cat. 
at 11.42, that is three minutes have lapsed. From here to here, we are three minutes into the poem. Then the signal is nearly due. It's departure time for the night mail. And the passengers are frantic to a man. What does it mean? Frantic to a man means everyone out there is searching frantically. You know, they are looking at all kinds of places for Skimble Cat. Then Skimble will appear and he will saunter to the rear. Now, what does it mean? Saunter means walk around lazily in a very relaxed kind of manner. You know, everybody is searching for him. As a coach, log hote na, sab log this thing, but and then the person will come uh, aram se and thing, you know, this thing. Amita, uh, and in a very relaxed manner. I remember a particular instance of Amitabh Bachchan recounting an incident about Shatrughan Sinha. I don't know if you, if your generation is familiar with these names. Amitabh Bachchan, you would be familiar with. Shatrughan Sinha, also you should be familiar with. Very prominent actors in the 1970s, 80s, and to an extent in the 90s. Now, of course, in more in character roles. So Amitabh Bachchan, in an interview, said about Shatrughan Sinha's, you know, famed habit of being very relaxed, very much like Skimble. He said that they would be waiting at the airport. The announcement would be made for the flight. Hmm? Announcement would be made for the flight and everybody would be searching for Shatrughan Sinha. Why hasn't he come? Because the announcements have been made and the, the gates will are about to close. And they will be coming and you know, Sinha saab, jaldi chaliye. Uh, flight ka time ho gaya hai, gates close hone wale hai. And his approach would be, aate hai, aate hai, kind of a thing. So, Skimbal is pretty much like that. That he will appear and he will saunter to the rear, you know, to the rear part of the train. He would just kind of move in a very lazy and a very relaxed kind of manner as if, oh, you guys were searching for me. It doesn't matter to me. I am not bothered, you know. So it's that kind of an attitude, that kind of a demeanor, right? Now, so the first stanza, what does it do till here? Till here, what has been established? Two things. The importance of Skimble, that without Skimble, the train cannot depart, that he is a rather relaxed kind of a cat, that he doesn't bother about the fact that everyone is searching frantically in high and low places. I mean, at all kinds of places for him, searching high and low for him, right? And there is also a kind of suspicion as to what was he up to, you know, hunting for the thimble, right? What was he up to? So there is that sense of suspicion as to where was he from where he appeared eventually and what was he up to? We don't know. So there is that suspicion that T.S. Eliot has raised that the people never know what this very important person is up to. I hope you are getting the parallel connection also. Humko nahi malum hota hai. This particular person who is kind of mentally manipulating each one of us what he is up to right but he will make an appearance and behave as though nothing has gone wrong okay let's move on i hope you have understood till here he has been busy in the luggage van so they say that he has been busy in the luggage van doing what we do not know okay now let's move on to the next stanza he gives one flash of his glass green eyes and the signal goes all clear so one flash of his green glass, uh, glass green eyes and then the signal goes all clear the night mail is about to depart and we are off at last for the northern part of the northern hemisphere now which which place is the train bound for now the train the train um, he, uh, is bound for uh, a place which is called the northern hemisphere let me just see where i have written uh, this thing. one second huh? Written it down somewhere. So, uh, when you are talking about this particular journey, that's the destination, the northern part of the northern hemisphere. So, you can talk about somewhere near the North Pole where the train is actually uh, bound for. So, that is the destination of the train. Okay, you may say that by and large it is Kimball who is in charge. Another important indication that he is the person who is completely in control of the situation of the sleeping car express. What did I say? Nightmail. Now this is the second name which has been mentioned. 
as far as the train is concerned. So this is the other name that you need to bear in mind. The sleeping car express. Night mail was one. Sleeping car is number two. From the driver and the guards to the bagman playing cards. So you see the activity which is taking place on the train. So if you get a question as to what happens on the train, you need to mention these kind of things. He will supervise them all, more or less. You know, he will keep an eye. Supervise means to keep an eye on everyone, on every activity taking place on the train. Down the corridor, he paces and examines all the faces. Examines means again being very vigilant. Everyone is under surveillance. Everyone is being watched all the time. Of the travelers in the first and the third, he establishes control by a regular patrol. Patrol means to kind of walk up and down and keep an eye. And he would know at once if anything occurred. So nothing can happen without he being in the know of things, right? He will watch you without winking and he sees what you are thinking. And it is certain that he does not approve of hilarity and riot. So the folks are very quiet. So he is the kind of person who is very serious. He does not approve of jokes. He does not appear of boisterous kind of behavior. So everyone is very quiet. So which means what? There is an element of fear. They are scared of skimble. They know that he does not approve. He does not approve. So if you get a question about the temperament of Skimbal, you need to include this that he does not improve of any kind of boisterous or riotous kind of behavior. You know, people laughing loudly, cracking jokes and generally behaving in a, I mean, for want of a better word, in a rowdy kind of manner. I don't want you to use the word in your answers, but I'm just telling you, right? So if you do that, so he does not approve of all that and he establishes control this is an important key phrase that he establishes control by a regular patrol that he keeps moving up and down the train so no one is uh, no one can escape his watchful eye okay so that is what hap happens on the train When Skimble is about and on the move you can play no pranks with Skimble shines he's a cat that cannot be ignored more aspects being told that you cannot play any pranks because he does not approve of hilarity and riot and you he is a cat who cannot be ignored you cannot say that you know we'll do what we want because he is all the time on regular patrol so nothing goes wrong on the northern mail this is the third name which is being mentioned <coughs> for the uh, train the northern mail right i hope you are noting it down northern mail when skimble shanks is aboard that is he's on the train oh it is very pleasant when you have found your little den with your name written up on the door now this is for the passengers that if i have booked my place by birth on the train so there will be my name also mentioned right there on my compartment you know where is my allotted seat so there will be my name which will be written there and the birth is very neat with a newly folded sheet so the amenity is being taken care of again by Skimble Shanks. And there is not a speck of dust on the floor. Speck means Thodi CB Dhul. Not even an, an inch of dust is there on the floor. So it's all very neat and clean. So if you are asked a question about how is the train maintained, the atmosphere on the train, you need to mention this. The, the general uh, you know, look and feel of the train or the amenity is being provided to the passengers. You need to mention these points. Okay, there is every sort of light. You can make it dark or bright. So it's a very, uh, you know, uh, it's very passenger friendly in the sense that there are lights which you can kind of control. You can either make it extremely bright or you can make it a little dark depending on your choice and what you are looking for. There is a handle that you turn to make a breeze. That is, there is a fan which you can switch on in order to make yourself feel cool, right? If it is hot. There is a funny little basin you are supposed to wash your face in and a crank to shut the window if you sneeze. That is, you know, you can uh, wash your face. There is a basin. So in that sense, it's almost like a mini house of sorts, right? Uh, so uh, breeze indicates the fan. Crank is a lever to open or shut the window. So a crank to shut the window if you sneeze, right? If you're feeling cold because of the cold breeze, you can shut the window. 
Then the guard looks in politely and will ask you very brightly, do you like your morning tea weak or strong? Do you like strong tea or do you like it with a lot of milk and water kind of thing, right? So, so there is personalization of service on board the train. You understood? The guard will kind of personally come and inquire, you know, to the minutest detail, you know, aapko chai kaisi pasand hai, right? That's what is the question, you know, how do you like your morning tea? So that when the morning comes, you are served what you desire, what you wish, not a, uh, you know, a generic kind of thing, the same kind of tea being served to 100 passengers. No, it is customized. It is personalized service and customized service for every passenger on the night mail. But Skimble is just behind him and was ready to remind him for Skimble won't let anything go wrong. So Skimble is also keeping an eye when the guard is coming and making these inquiries from the passengers. And when you creep into your cozy berth, another important phrase, please note it down and pull up the counterpane, right? Again, you know, uh, talking about a window kind of a thing, a bedspread, sorry, bedspread. You ought to reflect that it is very nice to know that you won't be bothered by mice. You know, there will be no chuha. They, because when the cat is there, how can the mice make merry? You can leave all that to the railway cat, the cat of the railway train. Railway train, another name being used out here, right? Though it's a little strange, you know, train is obviously of the railways, right? So this is what is being referred to the mice there. Now the mice, interestingly, in a larger context, what I mentioned, the metaphorical context is an indication of petty thieves, right? So what T.S. Eliot wants to convey is that the common man will not <clears throat> be bothered by criminal elements while they are asleep of burglars, of robbers, of thieves entering their house and looting the house, right? Or making anything go uh, amiss, go missing. And this is an indication of a totalitarian kind of a regime where what they're doing is that they're providing you some things that, you know, we'll keep you safe. No thieves, no burglars, no robbers, nothing. You are absolutely safe. Your property is absolutely safe and you'll be provided with all the amenities. But in return, you will be under watch. There is no privacy. You will be under surveillance all the time. That is the larger context of the story. When I'm writing the question and answers, I will explain all this in the question and answer answers that I write for you. Okay. So all you need to do is to listen to this video look at the note so that that acts like a second revision and then you read the question and answers so everything will be taken care of on this course okay so you understood the literal meaning as well as the larger context meaning that t.s Eliot is trying to uh, drive at in the watches of the night he's always fresh and bright Every now and then he has a cup of, of tea. Now, even though it is night, when every other passenger uh, is asleep, he will be kind of, you know, pretty fresh and bright, right? In the watches of the night means when it is night time. With perhaps a drop of scotch while he is keeping on the watch. That is while he is on the watch. He is not asleep. He does not sleep. So perhaps it's quite possible that before the train started at 11.42, he was sleeping somewhere because he wanted to catch up on sleep because he cannot sleep while the rest of the country, the rest of the passengers on the train or the rest of the people in the country sleep, right? Only stopping here and there to catch a flea, a typical cat, so that no flea comes and bothers any of the passengers. You were fast asleep at crew, that is one of the station. And so you never knew that he was walking up and down the station. When the train stopped there, maybe at 2, two o'clock in the night, 3 o'clock in the night, you were fast asleep, but Skimble was not asleep. He was walking up and down the crew railway station. You were sleeping all the while while he was busy at Carlisle. That's how it is pronounced. Carlisle, where he greets the station master with elation, with a lot of joy. Elation means with a lot of happiness and joy. So, crew railway station, Carlisle railway station. You did not know that the train had passed all these stations. Why? Because you were asleep, which means that even the common man kind of does not get to encounter a lot of the experiences or perhaps any problem because they are sleeping they are sleeping because they are unaware right and the station must the the, the skimble cat gives you the impression that he is taking care of everything so this is one of the positives that you can have a peaceful night's sleep but you will still be under watch 
you are sleeping but you are being watched that you are sleeping okay so it is a choice between complete freedom people enjoy calm and peace but they are not entirely free they are under watch all the time right uh, so they get privileges like a peaceful night's sleep without the fear of robbers oblique mice but this comes at the cost of their freedom i hope this larger point is absolutely clear to your children okay where he greets the station master with elation but you saw him at dumb fries where he speaks to the police if there is anything they ought to know about so dumb fries is the third railway station okay that's it has come in the morning and that's where the passengers have got up and they see him that he's speaking to the police out there right um, when you get to Gallowgate, the fourth railway station, please remember the names of the four railway stations, right? In MCQ format, etc. This can be a, a, an obvious question. Where you do not have to wait for Skimble Shanks will help you to get out. He gives you a wave of his long brown tail which says, I will see you again. So he's warm, he's gracious and he's polite, right? So uh, that's what he does. You will meet without fail on the midnight mail. Now yet another name for the night mail. The cat of the railway train. With this, we come to the end of this poem. So it's very obvious that Skimble Cat is the most important person on that particular train. Call it the midnight mail or the night mail or the different names that have been given to this particular train. He's responsible. He's extremely conscious of the fact that facilities and proper amenities have to be provided to all the passengers and he's polite but he's also a control freak that's an important phrase that you can use in your answers right he's a control freak right he kind of controls there are certain things he does not approve of which he does not want any passenger to indulge in he's also an intelligent and he's also a very alert cat Alert is another uh, adjective that you can use for skimble, right? Uh, and he takes care of every need of every passenger on board that particular train. So uh, I have written an answer on how do we know that skimble shanks takes care of the passengers, the different ways in which he does that. Uh, the rhyme scheme is A, B, C, B. Okay. Um, uh, but generally you don't get questions on rhyme scheme etc in ICSC generally you don't okay so with this we come to the end of this particular video I will be putting the notes I will also be putting the question and answers so that it becomes easy for you to attempt it don't have an obsession with your workbook you can attempt the answers if you understand the poem so our focus will be largely on understanding of the poem enjoying the poem understanding the larger context understanding the meaning of every word right once you do all this bit of understanding it will be pretty easy for you to kind of manage to uh, write any answer to any question that may be asked be it in subjective form or in mcq format god bless you thank you very much tata bye bye